So thanks for joining us. We're back with our second part of this interview with Jeff Luna of the Houston Astros. He's a general manager. You know they had a great season, and they're coming back to take it all the way this year in 2019. And we're just learning a little bit more about Jeff, so thanks for joining us. So we were talking about your incredible career trajectory, being born in Mexico, but having parents who were here from the U.S., talking about your career, your education, engineering, economics. You were a McKinsey consultant. How do you go from all of that to where you are today? And how have you been able to apply all those skills? It's a great question. I had three careers before okay. I got into baseball. The first was as an engineer. Okay. And the second was as a management consultant for McKinsey. And the third was as a entrepreneur. I, did, I started two companies from scratch, raised yeah. money and got them going. Okay. And really, I, it was opportunistic that I got into baseball. A former colleague of mine from the management consulting world asked me to meet his father-in-law, who happened to be the owner of one of the baseball teams. Yes. And they were looking for someone with more of a business technology background to come into the front office. Okay. And I happened to be the person that they identified. They, everybody knew, has always known I have a passion for baseball. I follow everything. I know all the details. Okay. So you had a love for it. Absolutely. You understood it. You knew who was who. And so Absolutely. you had that, but then you had that business acumen to exactly. go in and make some real big changes there. And, and right around uh, the year 2003, which is the year I got hired, owners were starting to recognize that the skill sets needed to be successful in baseball were changing. It wasn't all about having baseball experience and having played. It's also about understanding the changing world of technology and business yes. and economics. And that's why I got my shot. So I, I give a lot of credit to the yes. Cardinals for taking a chance on someone like yeah. me. Um, and I had a great eight seasons there, a lot of uh, two World Series and yeah. three World Series actually, uh, yeah. two, one, two wins. And, and I got a chance to develop as an executive. Mm -hmm. I will say that my experience internationally has helped a lot. 40% uh, of our mm -hmm. players are born outside the United States. Mm -hmm. My experience in business has helped a lot because mm -hmm. as you're trying to figure out how much to sign players for or what to pay players, mm -hmm. uh, it's all about the economics of the Absolutely. game. Absolutely. And as an engineer, my experience with technology has helped a lot because there's more technology involved in baseball today than there ever has been. So. I didn't know it, but those three careers that I had prior to baseball were all shaping me into the executive that I am And put you am in that place. So let's talk about that technology. What are some of the things in your mind that have transformed baseball today? Well, I will say that uh, in the past, experts like scouts and coaches would go out to evaluate players, okay. and they did their best, and they did a good job. Then we started to get... Uh, tools like a radar gun or a stopwatch and those tools became more and more sophisticated and now we have tools in the baseball stadium that would blow you away in terms of the accuracy and the intensity of the information that we get about everything that's happening on the field. And right then and there fast, right? right? then and there and then you need to have uh, analysts who can analyze all that information and put it into a form that executives can use to make decisions. So okay. it really is, when we're in the world of big data in baseball where the amount of information we have is overwhelming. Um, and so we have to hire really smart people to help us figure out what it means. And how many people are part of this team um, of support staff? I would say for an average club, probably 10, uh, 10 to 12. Um, we, we're a little bit ahead of the average. We probably have about 20 people that dedicate themselves to uh, studying, interpreting, or using the information. And so you look at your career and what a stellar career you've had with the Astros. What is next for the Astros? What's this next level that you all want to attain in terms of, uh, you know, the, the actual, right. you know, Minute Maid Park, a lot of renovation, yeah. a lot of change. We'll talk yeah. about that. But what's next for the Houston Astros? Well, for us, there's a lot of teams that have reached a championship and won a championship like we did two years ago. And they utilized all of their uh, fuel to get there and win, and then they peter out after that. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to not peter out. We want to maintain success for a long period of time, which is why last year we won 103 games. This year we're projected to have more wins mm -hmm. than anybody in baseball. And we really want to be uh, win multiple championships, sure. um, like the Giants did. They won three in six yes. years. That's our goal right now, mm -hmm. and to maintain uh, a long-term relationship with the youth of the city of Houston, um, baseball depends on the next generation, so we're doing a lot in the city to build ballparks and encourage people to play baseball because they don't always have a field or a glove or a ball to play with, and so we're doing a lot of that with our corporate partners around the city, mostly in disadvantaged neighborhoods, yes. to give kids an opportunity to learn what it's like and get them excited because one of the things we've learned is if you like baseball as a kid and you played baseball as a kid, you're more likely to be a fan when you're an adult. Sure, well that makes sense and the Astros Foundation has done a wonderful job of giving back to the community in so many different spaces and so we appreciate that. Let's talk about the renovations sure. that are taking place so that when we get back into Minute Maid, uh, we can take advantage of that. Yeah, well every year, um, Jim uh, funds 
funds renovations that uh, we're gonna make the fan experience better. Mm -hmm. One of the things we heard loud and clear from our fans over the past couple of years, and part of it's due to the intense security screening yes. going into the stadium, is that it takes too long yes. to get into the stadium and get to your seat. And quite frankly, we're not making any money and the customer's not happy at the longer you wait in line. So. One of the great things about this year is we're gonna have more points to come into the stadium, great. a much smoother access, and the concourse is gonna be designed in a way that allows you to get to your seat more easily. Mm -hmm. So we're just basically gonna jumpstart the experience and let the fans get to their seat and, and have that first Coke or that first hot dog yeah. as soon as possible. Well, that would be much appreciated. Someone who's been out in the lines <laughs> if I don't get there too early. Uh, and and uh, I serve on the Sports Authority, as you know, mm -hmm. and we've seen some of the renderings and, and know that this is just a great experience for Houstonians Absolutely. and others who come out to support our Astros. So let's talk a little bit about uh, your new you know, team. You've picked up some folks. Mm -hmm. We've lost a few people. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what the lineup's going to be. The good thing is that the Astros have returning uh, some of the best players in baseball. Jose Altuve, who won the MVP two years ago. Alex Bregman, who got MVP votes this year. Carlos Correa, who's certainly going to win an MVP at some point in the future. And George Springer who is one of the most exciting young players in the game, yes. uh, to go along with Yuli Gurriel and, and um, Josh Reddick and mm -hmm. Jake Marisnik and all the others that we love. Um, our pitching staff is anchored by two of the best pitchers in baseball, Justin Verlander and Garrett Cole. Um, and we have three new additions from this offseason. Aled Miss Diaz, a Cuban player who used to be with the Cardinals, was an all-star uh, two years ago. He's going to be with us playing multiple positions. Um, we, we have Robinson Chirinos, a uh, Venezuelan catcher, who's going to be sharing our catching duties with Max Stassi. Um, and we have Michael Brantley, who's one of the most uh, exciting players in the game, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, he just doesn't strike out at all. He makes hard contact and okay. plays good outfield. So those three additions we think are going to make up for some of the departures. We lost Dallas Keiko, We lost Marvin Gonzalez, Evan Gaddis, some other players that have been a yes. big part of our run the last few years. Yes. Well, we look forward to the season, and we want to thank you for all that you do and the entire team over at the Houston Astros for their engagement with the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and with the city of Houston as well. Well, I appreciate your support as always. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here on the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Houston Legends, and we'd like to thank Jeff Lunau for being among those. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>